Welcome to MoVC Control Cabinet Products Basic to Intermediate Training. This is session number 13, and as you can tell, it's not a lab. We're going to take another quick break from the labs to provide some background information that applies to several of the labs downstream. This is also really a transition point in the class. Everything we've covered so far is really what I would call the basic information. Now we're transitioning to intermediate topics. We're going to be looking at things like Movi kits, field bus communications, more advanced ways of working with the VFD. So this is a good opportunity to introduce a few concepts that we'll clarify later labs. Let's get going. As you can guess from this first big idea, we're talking about Movi kits. Those are the application modules that I've referred to several times. They implement various kinds of control tasks without requiring you to be a programmer. You just configure Movi kits and they're ready to run. They solve a lot of problems, they're extremely useful, and SEW has introduced quite a few of them so far, and the list grows over time. The purpose of this particular session is to sort of talk about Mobi kits in greater detail so you understand them and you understand also how they work, how they're implemented, and how they're licensed or purchased if necessary. I should also mention that some Mobi kits can be combined with your own programs. If you're an IEC 61131-3 programmer, and that's someone who programs PLCs, then you can potentially combine your code with Movi kits under certain circumstances. For those of you who aren't PLC programmers, the IEC 61131-3 languages are five standard languages that are used with PLCs of all brands. SEW Eurodrive, by the way, supports the full standard, and it is certainly possible to program our controllers using those five languages as well. That leads to a little side topic that it is possible to treat our controllers sort of like PLCs and program them directly yourself. That is obviously an advanced topic. We're not going to touch on that here, but I just wanted you to know the possibility exists. But back to Movi kits. Some Movi kits are free, while others require level upgrades or license fees, and we will certainly talk about that more before this session is over. These are the current Mobi kits that are available right now. The list certainly may change. It's been expanding during my acquaintance with the Mobi C product line, which began in 2016 and continues up to the present. Let me just clarify this by introducing a very important concept that Mobi kits divide into two broad categories called drive level and controller level. The first row you can see is labeled drive. Those are drive level Movi kits, and the other two rows are controller level. We will talk about what is different between those in just a few minutes. These are the free Movi kits. There are two free drive level Movi kits, velocity drive, which is very popular, and torque drive. Under controller level, there are two free ones at this time, velocity and positioning. All the other Movi kits do cost money, and you'll have to license them or upgrade an application level to be able to use them. Okay, we will talk more about that in just a few minutes. Let's start by talking about drive level Movi kits. First of all, what are drive level? What does that term mean? Drive level Movi kits run directly on the VFD or under certain conditions on an access module. That's part of Movi Drive Modular, remember. They work with all three types of Movi C VFDs. There are some restrictions, which I will be covering in just a second. But the point is they run within the VFD itself. So here's kind of the big picture. You set up the Movi kit using Movi Suite, our engineering software, using it in very much the way you've already learned to use it. We'll be exploring setting up a drive level Movi kit pretty quickly in a future lab. So the Movi kit is assigned to the Access or the VFD in Movi Suite, and then it is parameterized. You set parameters to configure its behavior. So that's the user application once you've configured it. Now within the VFD or the Access module is a piece of internal software that's part of the firmware called Dataflex. Dataflex is an internal operating system and programming environment that the Movi kit runs under. The Movi kit is actually written in the Dataflex programming language. 
and that lives inside the VFD or inside single access modules. It executes the Movi kit and makes it do its magic. Pretty simple and straightforward. Drive level Movi kits, as I've said multiple times, reside in the VFD and they receive commands over the field bus from an external PLC that just sends the Movi kit commands. The Movi kit does the heavy lifting, the PLC just has to send a few commands to it. So it's kind of like this. The Movi kit is living inside the VFD. PLCs out here can be any brand you like. It's connected up to the field bus and it communicates with the Movi kit telling it what to do. It's really simple and straightforward. Now, here's where we get into the money side of things. A VFD or access modules application level determines which Movi kits it's able to run. In other words, which ones are free and which ones you pay for. There are three application levels, level zero, level one, and level two. And here are the list of the Movi kits that can run at each level. Now, if you buy a level zero application level VFD, which is the least expensive, you can run the velocity and torque control Movi kit. If you wanna run the others, you have to upgrade to level one, and that can run all the standard ones. SCW Eurodrive can, under the right conditions, create custom Movi kits for customers. They do this by writing them in the Dataflex language, but in order to run these, you need to have an application level of two. So for most things, if you have an application level of one, you're good to go, but of course, if you have level two, then that gives you complete flexibility. As you can guess, going up the level hierarchy costs more money. You can select it at purchase time, or if you decide later you need a higher level and you didn't buy one at purchase time, you can upgrade it later. Just call our customer service department and they can talk you through the whole process. MoviDrive technologies are available in level 0, 1, or 2, so they support all levels. On the other hand, MoviDrive system and the single access modules only support level 0. Now you may be thinking, boy, that's pretty limiting. Those can't run the higher level Movi kits. Well, that's what controller level Movi kits are all about. And the reason we really don't support drive level that highly on system and the single access modules, because we really want you to use the controller level ones, but there is some capability in there. And at the time I'm preparing this training, there are some firmware changes in the pipeline, which may expand that capability for drive level slightly. All right, enough said about that. By the way, you may be wondering, what about double access modules? You haven't mentioned them once. Well, they can't run drive level Movi kits at this time. It's because they can't fit Dataflex into their firmware. Do be aware, however, that they can run all the controller level Movi kits. So you're not crippled by having double access modules. You just can't run drive level Movi kits at this time. But as I said, there are some changes in the pipeline. That may change by the time you watch this training. If you're unsure about that, contact your SEW Eurodrive representative and ask the question. All right, well, let's move on to the controller level Movi kits and talk about them. How do they differ? Controller level Movi kits run on the controller. In other words, you can't use them with Movi Drive technology because it doesn't have a controller. They run on the controller that is very typically part of a Movi Drive system or Movi Drive modular installation. You set them up in a similar way, but there are some differences. You do it still with Movi Suite, our standard engineering software. But then there are a number of choices. There are parameterizable Movi kits. Those are the simplest ones. You just set a few parameters and that becomes your user application. It then runs on a piece of software that lives in the controller. There are two choices, Movi Run Smart and Movi Run Flexible. There is a price difference between them, but this is kind of like the operating system that supports the Movi kit. And then that runs within the controller. And then of course the controller over the EtherCAT S Bus Plus network controls the VFDs and access modules. Now, besides this path, which is really the standard Movi kit path, there are also customizable Movi kits, and there is completely custom IEC 611.31-3 PLC type programming, which you can do. We're not getting into that in this class. That's an advanced topic, but I wanted to show you the full picture here. A controller level Movi kit actually has two components. It has a component that lives in the VFD and a component that lives in the controller. 
So for example, if you're running the Rotary Knife Movie Kit, it has a piece that runs in the VFD or the access module, and it's got a piece that lives in the controller itself. So it's important to understand the way the Movie Kit gets divided in a controller level Movie Kit. Since we're not dealing with those in this class though, I just am touching on it briefly. Again though, commands from an external PLC are processed by the controller and it manages the VFD from there. So again, it's doing the heavy lifting. The external PLC just sends a few basic commands, kind of like this. Now, controller level Movi kits are controlled by licenses, not application levels. You need to buy a license to run Movi kits that aren't included for free. You set this up in Movi Suite. There's a piece of software called the License Manager, and you add them in using the License Manager tool. So once you purchase a license, you can just add it in to your controller, and then it's all set to go. You can purchase these at order time. You can purchase them later. And there are seven day free trial versions available, which are fully functional. So if you don't wanna commit any money, but you do wanna play with it, you've got seven days to play with it, download the trial license and give it a whirl. Pretty simple. Now let's just touch briefly on field bus control. I don't wanna spend a lot of time on this because it is a more advanced topic and one we're not covering in this course. But here's kind of the big picture of field bus control. And if you're a PLC programmer, I'm guessing you already know something about this topic. If you're not, this is just a very tiny introduction. So we've got some devices out here and you can see we have a mixed bag. We have some MoviDrive technologies. We have some MoviDrive systems with their matching controller. And they're out there and they're going to be talking to a PLC like this third party PLC. They're all networked together over the field bus. The field bus connects directly to the MoviDrive technologies, but it connects to the controller with the MoviDrive system setup. Devices on field buses communicate by exchanging process data words. These are 16-bit words that go back and forth between the PLC, the field bus, and the devices on it. Everything is labeled from the perspective of the PLC. In other words, we're looking outward from the PLC to the external devices. So we call process output words the words that go from the PLC to the devices, and we call process input words the words that go to the PLC from the devices. So it's PLC oriented. The PLC is looking out and it's receiving things back in. It's kind of like this. Process output words go from the PLC to the network and to the devices, and then they send information back with the process input words. Process output words typically carry commands and parameters that go to the VFDs, telling them what to do, and process input words usually contain status information that goes back to the PLC. It's pretty simple and straightforward. Now, one little demystification moment. This is kind of a German-English situation again. Occasionally in our documentation and even in our software, you may see POs and PIs labeled as PAs and PEs. And you may wonder, what are those? I'm not used to those. Well, again, it's a bit of German. A and E are the first letters of the German words for output and input, Ausgang and Eingang. So when you see those, just mentally substitute PO and PI and you'll be fine. SEW describes its field bus type control by how many process data words the PLC must send to the VFDs and receive back. One type that is very common is called 5PD because it uses five process data words. Velocity oriented Mobi kits use this method, they use 5PD. The PLC and the controller or VFD exchange 5PDs in each direction, and they are these. PO1 sends control information telling the VFD what to do. PO2 sends the speed value. Three and four are the up and down ramps. And PO5 controls the digital outputs on the VFD or access module. The VFD or access module sends back status information in PI1 and PI3, the current speed in PI2, a user selected parameter in PI4, it's often the amount of current the motor is drawing, and PI5, the status of its digital inputs. So that is, in a nutshell, what the VFD and the PLC are exchanging in 5PD mode. There's also an 8PD mode. It is commonly used with the positioning 
oriented Mobi kits, they need a few extra process data words. So they're exchanging eight PDs in each direction, and they are these. PO1 is a control word that tells the VFD what to do. PO2 is the speed. Three and four ramp up and down. PO5 digital outputs. You notice that's practically the same as 5PD. But then PO6 selects the positioning mode, and then seven and eight, the actual position you want to go to. PI1 and PI3 provide status. PI2 sends back the VFD's current speed. PI4 is user selectable. PI5, the digital inputs. Again, that matches 5PD. PI6 indicates which mode the VFD or access module is in. PI7 and PI8, the current position. So pretty simple. And we may be offering additional classes online on our channel here in the future where we talk about field bus control in a little more detail. But that's enough for now. Just a few final big ideas. There are other PD arrangements that are possible for other Movi kits. 5PD and 8PD are not the only possibilities. There are some specialized and customized formats as well. And if you're familiar with our older equipment, our B generation, these do not match the earlier ones. We did not try to maintain backwards compatibility with the older systems. Movi C was just too different. So what you know in the past definitely applies, but it is not identical. And with that, I'm going to wrap up this session. That is the end of session 13. With session 14, we're getting back to labs. We're going to be getting into our first Movi kit. See you then.